Hey there, this is Adam from Cleaver, and if you're wanting to do everything that is new for Vue, for Nux, for Content, for Tailwind, for all these different frameworks and modules, then this is a good starter video for you. Basically, what I'm going to do is just highlight some of the steps that I took to create this page. And with Cleaver's sister product called Feedmist.com, I created this page over the weekend called Guide, and the whole site right now is using Nux3, uh, which is using Vue3, and I also started using Content Version 2, which just came out a couple days ago. And I used that to create this page for the guides for Feedmist. And what I was kind of aiming for was a similar experience to Cleaver.io on our features page right here, uh, where we have this left page table of contents navigation, and the content in the center. So on this, this is all just with view components, but I wanted the guide for Feedmist obviously to be a little more manageable with Markdown, so I went with content, and since content version two was available and is next three compatible, I wanted to get started with this so that it's a, a little feature proof, but of course, since it's all pretty new, I stumbled across a couple of issues. And that was really my main motivator for creating this is just to highlight some of the things that helped me with this stage of where the ecosystem is right now. And I'm just gonna walk through this at a high level. It's not gonna be a tutorial, just wanna point out some of the, the main things and lessons learned that I had when creating this page. Okay, one of the first things was when I was getting started and I added a new project, it wasn't as much of a starter template as I was looking for, so what I did was just go to GitHub and typed in starter template. My main thing is I wanted to use Tailwind CSS, so that was what I was looking for in a Next3 starter template. And after I cloned one of those starter templates, the first thing I did after installing and getting my local environment up and ready uh, was I went in and I used Yarn to add Next Content. So we're using the latest of Next Content, which is now on version two. It just came out a couple days ago, and yeah, they made it even more simple than the first version of content. It's been pretty cool. And then after you install Next Content, the next thing that they have you do is go to your nux.config.ts or JS file and then add that module in there. One thing I do want to mention that I found when building for production and trying to deploy out the application is I saw a lot of memory leaks and after a lot of Google searching, I found that what people were recommending is to add certain things to build transpile. So if you're getting a lot of build errors or just errors in general trying to deploy out a, a Next3 application and you're using Tailwind, this could be the culprit. So if you add those packages to the transpile section here that may actually resolve the problem and I know on the Cleaver side with uh, supporting some other users that are using Nux3 that was a, a very similar issue often with them is that there was either a package that they had as a dependency that was out of date or just adding the package to the transpile list here uh, worked wonders and it resolved the issue and I, I found that to be the case with me. So, okay now that I have content configured with a Nux that's all I had to do was just do the yarn install and then add it to the module list. And next from there, what you'll need to do is add your content section. So you add your content directory here and then you can add your markdown files in here. Uh, I recommend looking at the documentation that Nuxt has or how exactly this works. Honestly, the coolest thing is probably under pages and this is another hiccup I found. I was just trying to append uh, some of the content stuff to a page that was named guide.viewer and what I was running into was, you know, nothing was actually coming into the page. And so after looking even more closely at the, the Nuxt3 documentation, I noticed that they had this for their .view file where you put in the three dot slug and that worked actually perfectly. And what I was gonna mention is the coolest thing is if we go down to the script area, you'll notice that I have nothing here in the script section about fetching the content. Where it is is now it's under the tag name up here, content doc. And I was having a little bit of issue trying to get the content to automatically load. Supposedly you're not supposed to need the path to be uh, strictly defined unless you want it to be for some use case. I think probably the, the issue here was my URI was capitalizing the G in guide and I don't have my markdown file uh, with a capital G. I think that's probably the issue, but either way, I just explicitly added the path and then that started to work perfectly. And another cool thing since I'm looking at it is tell one typography with pros. I now saw that they have these classes that you could add to better define the styling for different elements, which I don't believe they had in the past when I was using it before. So this is probably a new cool thing with Tailwind. 
if I wanted to find, let's say, a link for posts where everything, if I didn't have this, would be underlined for a hyperlink and I didn't want that, I could just call it out here, post A, and then say no underline, and then also define a cover treatment for that as well. So I thought that was pretty cool. And actually, let me go to the Tailwind typography page right here real quick. I just want to highlight this if you scroll down, 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 down. Uh, you can see all those uh, modifiers here and I thought that was super helpful and again something I don't believe I saw before in the earlier version but this was pretty killer. And if I go into the actual guide markdown file, uh, one other thing, pictures. So the images that you have, you'll probably need to create a public folder and that media will be available under that path. So I have mine under the guide section for, for the guides page and you can see that there. And all right, well, that's, that's really it. I just wanted to show a couple of tips and tricks and hopefully if you got stuck somewhere like I did, uh, hopefully that helped out.